So it's a cold, snowy day here in Helena, and you can't see Mount Helena right now. There's too much weather. And I've got the sewing room pretty much packed up and ready to move into its new location. I used to tell my daughter, you always wear your bike helmet, period. If you don't want to have a helmet on, don't go for a bike ride. And these are tips where as soon as you realize you're, you've forgotten and you're being careless, you should correct and do that every time until it's ingrained in you and you don't forget to do it anymore. Safety tips for happy sewing. It doesn't seem like much, but as time goes by, it adds up. All the fabric dyes and soda ash and related chemicals, the paints, the inks, the fixers and extenders, the bleach and neutralizers, the waxes and other resists, the spray base and other spray adhesives, the leather dyes and conditioners, the spray fabric protector. I used a lot of spray fabric protector before I stopped doing that to my purses and other items. Spray starch stiffeners, iron cleaner, it all adds up. Please always refer to the manufacturer's health cautions and wear a mask, wear gloves, wear something to prevent splatters from getting in your eyes, and crack a window, work outside when you can. Take it seriously, it adds up. Tip number eight is to use wood to push and primp the fabric right before it gets to the needle area. I know that I've talked about this before and it's been part of other tips because my favorite tool is a, to have a clothespin. I've used also chopsticks and various little wooden dowels. Occasionally I've used my bodkin and my screwdriver, but you can really get into trouble quickly with metal. With a clothespin, the worst thing that happens is you stitch into it and you perhaps break a needle, but at least it won't be the kind of catastrophic crash that you can have when your needle hits metal. And speaking of crashes, tip number seven is surge protection. I have it on good authority that all sewing machines should have a surge protector and I think that's especially important if you're computerized at all. And 1000 joules is recommended, although Personally, I try to do better than that. If you can search protect your computer, you can search protect your sewing machine and any other important electronics you have in the sewing room. Come up with a system where you don't ever leave your iron on unattended. That's a recipe for disaster. Another concern is whether or not you're on the same circuit as your sewing machine because your iron can cause a surge because they're really heavy pullers. When I used to do a lot of production sewing, I had an iron where you could defeat the auto shut off function so that it no longer shut off. And that was what I did routinely. Now I actually have an iron that shuts off automatically. I still like a power strip or surge protector with the iron. The other thing related to this is I've seen a lot of really cute uh, pins on Pinterest and stuff like that for making um, a homemade cover for your iron and I think that's a fine idea for someone who has a beautiful sewing room and does some ironing here or there. If you're doing production sewing and you're pressing say purse tops and you're say you're doing a stack of a dozen or two dozen purse tops and you've painted them or inked them and you need to move your iron across your design and leave it in each position for 30 seconds or a minute depending on what you're using you're gonna heat up the surface so much that I really think that having actual ironing board fabric with the heat reflective properties, etc., is, is more desirable than a pretty cotton fabric. I, I think a commercial ironing board cover 
has features built into it that you won't necessarily put in just making yourself a cute one. I've even seen some nice ideas for making a little ironing table out of a wooden TV tray or other kind of table and I heat my ironing surface up so much that I actually prefer the metal ironing surface that is mesh-like with holes to allow heat to escape through. So that's just my feeling about it. If you've seen very many of my videos, you know that I don't pin unless I have to. I try to manage my layers as I'm working. Sometimes I use fusible thread so that I only have to do four pins in the corner for bindings. And that's just until you hand sew it, by the way, or machine sew it. And I have used binder clips a little bit, but they tend to catch on things. And so I'm more interested in the newer clips, sewing clips that are on the market now. I may pick some clips up at some point. I'm kind of old school about certain things. and So I like my relationship with pins where I have them and I use them, but if I can devise a way to make it without, I do. And, uh, but one technique that helps a lot is, and I'm talking about with quilted work, where there are several layers, if you bury the pin in the work, you can avoid a lot of having that end there where you get the pin scratches and can easily prick yourself while you're working on things. It's just something to think about what strategies work best for you to minimize that. If you allow your rotary cutter and your scissors, your utility knives, or an X-Acto to roll around in your workspace or sit on the floor where you've been working on something with the blade exposed, sooner or later someone's going to stick their foot or cut the side of their finger. This is just one of those things, and I'm no statistical expert, but I think that you reduce your chances of swallowing a sharp piece of metal down to almost zero if you never put one in your mouth. My last two I actually talk about all the time in the videos because statistically I do believe they're the ones most likely to get you if you sew a lot. Number two is to always, always, always take your foot off the pedal when you're working around the needle, when you're changing your foot, when you're changing, threading your needle, anything like that because the chances of you shifting your weight or somehow otherwise disturbing your pedal just enough to get your finger are pretty high if your hands are there and your foot's on the pedal all the time. Eventually there's a chance, even just a twitch in your foot, if that ever happens to you, could cause real trouble. And then finally my last one is to wear eye protection. When you are especially free motion quilting, but any kind of construction where you might break a needle. And so why not just keep glasses there? I wear glasses now with a little bit of magnification, but for years I wore just plain glass glasses that were cute, that were from the Claire in the mall. They just were had red plaid frames, and uh, my daughter and I each got a pair, and I used to wear mine sewing and uh, put something on. It doesn't have to be safety goggles. It could be if you can still see well enough to see your detail. But I think any glasses that you wear for magnification are probably fine unless they've gotten so tiny, tiny, tiny that they really don't cover your eyeball. Needle shrapnel is real. I've had it hit my face many times. Never had it hit my eye. It's not really a freak accident if you knew there was a chance it would happen sooner or later. Take care of yourself. Have a great holiday. Thanks.